Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to yet another episode of Rendezvous with Anza Saki from CXO Global TV. CXO Global Forum is a knowledge sharing platform for all sea levels across Pakistan and the world. We take massive pride in contributing to the knowledge economy, and each time we try and interview some very interesting thought leaders, domain experts, and movers and shakers of the corporate industry. Today, we've got a very interesting gentleman with us. His name is Mr. Amar Nafi. He's the director of business growth at Cheating, and he has more than 16 years of experience in e-commerce. Uh, welcome Thank to the you. show, Amar. Thank you. Thank you, Kanza. Um, you know, at Cheating, we know that Cheating is a success story, and we know that you are a success story. But what I'm more interested in knowing is how did you end up here? What, where did you go to school? Where did you grow up? Where did your journey begin? What courses you studied? Amazing. Yeah, I actually, I grew up in Iran. Uh, my parents had uh, moved to Iran before I was born. So my initial schooling was there in Pakistan International School, which is an English medium uh, a school in Tehran. Uh, went through the same O-levels, A-levels uh, uh, in the early, early part. Then I moved to the UK uh, uh, to do my bachelor's degree. Uh, I did an honors degree in systems engineering, basically learning how to devise computer systems. Uh, and make them sort of gel in with the overall business. Uh, at that time, this was back in 03, then I started working at Amazon as my first job. Uh, it was actually learning, uh, joined as an intern and then became a full-time uh, employee, learning about how the operational side of Amazon works, when the orders come in, how do they get processed. And at that time, Amazon wasn't the big giant it is today, but it was still relatively the biggest e-commerce at that time as well in the world. Uh, and then after that, it was just a, uh, the journey sort of continued with the getting involved with the tech startups. Uh, and then after Amazon, I joined another online fashion retailer, Isabella Oliver. Uh, I also uh, jointly founded with my friend uh, a ticketing marketplace company oh, in the UK. Uh, and then in 08, I moved back to Pakistan, primarily to be with a family. Uh, and then also got involved in the in the professional space in Pakistan. Uh, started my career in Pakistan with the Team Telecom, which was an internet service provider. And then looking at the product side of it, and then the value-added services that we could possibly offer to our customers to keep them engaged. Uh, and then I spoke, uh, met with the CEO for LX, uh, which was an online classifies marketplace back in 2012. Uh, and they were looking to expand in Pakistan and I actually was became the first person to join them and establish OLX in Pakistan. Wow. Um, and then the journey to Ras happened, I That's right, yeah. After about five years with, uh, with OLX and growing it from a company that had zero users to about by the time I left, it was closer to 10 million uh, uh, users, uh, was looking for the next challenge and then this was very interesting space at that time, uh, Alibaba's acquisition of the Raz, um, uh, and the Raz is present in five countries. So there was an interesting time and I was following it and then I uh, got approached again by the chief growth officer at the Raz who wanted me to come over and we look at the overall business growth over there, what are the verticals we operate and how do we actually scale uh, post the acquisition. Um, so then I, I spent uh, about uh, you know, a year and a half, closer to two years at the Raz. Um, and then again, I, I met uh, Majid, who is our CEO yeah. at Chite, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we had a discussion on, on how do we see this space moving, and I actually really believed in the vision that Majid has for, for the company. I think that's very important, believing in the vision. Um, yeah. But speaking of the e-commerce sector now, um, post-pandemic, we've realized that there's been exponential growth in e-commerce, especially in uh, the uh, emerging markets like Pakistan. But my question to you is, since you've had all this global exposure as well, and you've seen like decades worth of the journey of e-commerce, how do you compare our emerging markets like Pakistan or other countries in South Asia versus the Western market? So the way that I would look at it is in, in the Western markets uh, or uh, the developed markets, uh, the adoption of internet was relatively quick. And once people got you know, sort of got on the internet and got online, uh, they were looking for services. So like in the early parts of 2000s, there were a whole bunch of companies. I mean, people forget that Facebook came around in 04 in Harvard uh, dorm room, Mark Zuckerberg's yeah. dorm room. 
and then proceeded to really scale very quickly. So in the early 2000s, there was all these companies taking shape and then really scaling with the uh, adoption of internet as it was growing and a lot of users were coming on board. So that sort of happened in the early, early 2000s, as I said. For emerging markets like Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, all of this part of the world, particularly Indonesia, Philippines as well, um, this was more of an internet was a relatively new thing for them. And then particularly in Pakistan, if we speak about Pakistan, um, the, the sort of growth of internet, which actually came after the 3G and 4G uh, you know, availability uh, with the data connections, we got a lot of people online and all those people would then started demanding services, like as uh, is the case in, in offline business uh, sort of as well. Um, so if you were to compare, like how do people engage with the emerging markets to versus the, versus the developed market, uh, it would be internet being relatively new, people still getting on smartphones for the first time, trying out the internet for the first time. Uh, that was going to take its due course and take a few years to get there. Absolutely. With the arrival of COVID as it did and disrupted a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of normal day-to-day -day routine. Uh, a lot of people also in these emerging markets, particularly Pakistan, also had to essentially being stopped from going outside and then that would mean that they would have to get all the stuff that they need online. The biggest growth that e-commerce saw uh, was also like all the purchasing or of the electronics or the household appliances. On the other side, when you look at Kareem and, and Uber, while, while they did suffer a bit of consequence after the lockdown, uh, they're seeing good growth post lockdown. Uh, we also have companies like Food Panda, which is our competitor, Absolutely. but also uh, other startups who also saw like, so what in essence, what I would tell all my different colleagues is what it would have taken us years and lots of uh, marketing dollars to get people to try something out. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, if you were set up before COVID, you actually were able to take advantage of this increase. And um, just just to, you know, as, just to give you a figure, it was almost you could say 100 percent growth uh, wow. uh, in COVID in COVID era. Uh, what what we, you would get pre COVID. So this has really helped, and people are really trying out the services. Absolutely. So when we're talking about e-commerce in particular in Pakistan, um, a lot of people, you know, um, now there's a buzzword called experience or so one focuses on the consumer experience, the customer experience, and that translates to a lot of growth in sales. How important do you think experiences and uh, what are you doing actually in, in, in a sort of revolutionizing? Uh, that's a very good question. Actually, I would I would tell you about when I was really early in my career, standing in Amazon and Jeff Bezos giving us a town hall. Uh, it was about at that time, even that was you know 15 years ago. Uh, he would still stress about the user experience. The reason anybody would use would use a particular service on the internet is because of the experience that you provide them. Now that experience has many many factors. One part of the experience is actually the experience you have on the app itself or on your platform. How easy do you make people? Uh, do you make it for people to find the items that they're looking for? The search functionality, uh, the browsing. How do you make? How easy do you make it for people to discover items on your platform? Uh, how seamless can you make the uh, the or the entire buy purchasing journey, which is adding to cart, checking out, uh, making the payments process seamless. Uh, in countries like Pakistan and emerging markets, mostly it's uh, cash on delivery, but in, obviously uh, as we see the growth of EasyPass and mobile payments picking up, yeah. that also becomes key. So speaking of mobile payments, here's, here's a very important pain point for most users now. Um, I know that a lot of people still in Pakistan are reluctant to be using uh, online services for the sheer reason that uh, not everyone uh, is comfortable or has that digital trust with online services or especially online shopping. How do you tackle this narrative, um, whether it's through online payments or even receiving goods online? Because I know my mom ordered a couple of things online and she had a bad experience and then she's all like, she's completely just villainized the whole uh, Absolutely. experience. So how would you tackle this narrative? This does happen, like, and, you, and you used a very important word, which is trust. The reason that people are not comfortable using an online payment method is a trust element and the ability not to be, uh, not to have a fraud occur with them, uh, get the right item that they've ordered to arrive at their doorstep. So companies like Daraz, who are in e-commerce space in particular, they really look after like how can you make that process seamless. 
Uh, generally, if you, if you talk about the transactions online, in, at the end of the day, what customers are looking for is the ability to, to have the confidence that they, if they got an item at their door, which was delivered by any company, they can return it easily, not really have that much hassle, not have the confidence that if you paid, for, a, for example, a thousand rupees for something, you actually get that item, you have the confidence that the company will be able to provide you a proper refund uh, process. Okay. So it's uh, about the same services now, right? Exactly. Really so, um, so this is about the consumer, right? Post-pandemic, I was reading about this report that was published by uh, Harvard Business Review and they said that you know, after COVID, 1.6 billion people throughout the world have been, their jobs have been compromised, their sustainable living has been compromised. We need to create more employment for the youth in Pakistan and we also need to sustain others that are there. What is Chite doing in terms of creating employment for the young people? That's a very good. Uh, that's a very good point that you bring across. I think the role of technology companies in general is to create those employment opportunities that perhaps five years or ten years ago were not even possible. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what what the tech companies are doing, I would focus particularly on Chita, is to solve is to develop a superior technology to be able to solve the now commerce problem. Uh, now commerce is slightly different from e-commerce, where it's really focused on what you would like in the next hour or two hours. So which is where you think about food or you think about groceries, this is something that you really need in the next hour or so you know, nobody orders food. So ordering so, a t-shirt would be e-commerce, but yes. ordering a pizza would be now commerce. Exactly. So that's yeah. yeah, so the e-commerce would generally the behavior is that once you once you place an order, you take a couple of days for your order to arrive and a lot of companies are trying to solve that problem. In the e now commerce space, it's all about trying to manage or writing the right algorithms at the back end in your technology to be able to manage the the allocation of your operational uh, resources and ob obviously able to uh, you know fulfill the order within that short space of time. So Mark, we spoke about quite a few interesting points right now and uh, I really admire the kind of work that you're doing at Chite for creating employment opportunities for the young people that are around and you know it is the onus is on us to also contribute to the sustainable economy otherwise we will not have a future to go back to. However, speaking of a sustainable future, we know that all companies must diversify and go into you know, different verticals. What is in store for uh, growth in different verticals for GDP? Uh, we believe like uh, uh, the area, of course, uh, uh, the expertise that we have is in, on, in now commerce. We can make sure that, uh, that what you want at this, like as I said, earlier, uh, in a short space of time, we can uh, deliver to you. Uh, within this space, if you start thinking, like we, we were in the food space and then we started our grocery vertical. Our focus is, again, because the grocery is something that you, you really need it on demand and we can fulfill it quickly. Uh, we want to focus on building the customer experience on these two verticals before we start thinking about building another one. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, when I when I talk to the other management and the CEO's vision about where do we want to take or which, which verticals do we want to open, there's quite a few things on the table. We uh, we would be uh, coming into the market with a, with, a, with a new vertical soon and then another one uh, a few months down the line. And I think this exciting space, but, but first, I believe, linking up to your earlier question, getting the customer experience right is the key in order to scale your business. If I were to get 100 orders today of any vertical that I operate in and I'm making a mess of the 30 of them, that means my you know, gross to net is like really suffering. So I need to make sure that my 100 orders that I get today are then fulfilled at 100% rate yeah. so that I can scale it to a million or 10 million orders. Uh, so this is the, the, the strategy is this, right? So to, to getting the experience right first and then building the verticals on top of it. So there is, there is a plan that we would, we would uh, uh, do that in the, in the next few months. So on a lighter note, I mean, that this is something that, that is very, very important. When we talk about growth in businesses, um, there's been a lot of studies now that have proved that people now uh, like to do business with people that they know, know, like, and trust KLT. And a very good example of that is the fact that if you look at the Twitter following for um, Kermit the Frog, that's six, million, uh, six billion. And uh, if you look at um, you know, Sesame Street, that's somewhere around two. So you know that's 
Interesting. So same goes for Tesla versus Elon Musk. Yeah. It's like about three times more. So people identify with faces. Influencers play a big, big role in creating yeah. successes for companies now. What do you think about this concept and uh, have you been implementing it at g -Pay? Uh, I think when you look at the technology space uh, with, with the, as I said, the adoption of the internet and a lot of early adopters, the YouTubers of Pakistan and the Instagram influencers, we have this really huge uptake in the influencer community. Uh, the way that we feel that we could interact, particularly when you think about e-commerce, is about going into the video sort of uh, from static ads on, on your uh, app, for example, you go into the video uh, showcasing your products. Mm -hmm. through through video and that's where the link for influencers would come across. For, for a company such as ourselves, we want to really work with the influencer community uh, in order to get our message across to the people and get, particularly because we feel if we want to really win this market, it's really important to get uh, get with the with the under 30 population and Pakistan is a large population of that. So we do have a very focused strategy to try to engage the influencers but in order to really measure how do we, we see a value for our business from the influencer uh, uh, program, but also enabling the, the influencers that are in the market to be, uh, to be able to grow themselves as well as help us as a brand to, uh, to grow. So it's really important to get that right. And one aspect of that is the, the, the data part of seeing the performance or what is the impact that you're driving for the business by engaging in this. Absolutely, it's all about uh, the impact that you create, create and uh, more of you created quite a big impact on our e-commerce uh, sector in Pakistan. I would take the liberty of saying that. However, when one looks at your profile, we see a lot of successes. Have you seen any failure? Uh, particularly, I would say like any experience that I've had in Pakistan or even at Amazon, I actually started up a few verticals over there as well and wrote an algorithm that really helped with the efficiency. But I would not really say that there, there have been failures because uh, in, in that aspect that the entirety of the project might be a failure. But failure is a real concern. Everything that we do, we always uh, uh, make sure that we are accounting for the failure and if we are failing at something we are able able to learn from it yeah so if we for example if we take a bet that such a such a thing would work for our acquisition strategy and if it turns out that it didn't work the idea is not to criticize that failure but actually learn from that failure could 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 we have done something differently could we have had the messaging differently could we have had the landing page differently or could we have the customer segmentation differently in order to achieve our goal uh, I really encourage my team as well to, to really uh, have that as part of their habit. To, to be not be afraid of the failures that they will, they will see in their projects, but actually be able to learn. And as long as, uh, the biggest failure I believe is not learning from the mistakes that you've made. Absolutely. Uh, so I think that's how we evaluate the team and that's how we try to keep on improving ourselves uh, every day. Amar, so we, we live um, in a fast-paced, very well-connected uh, environment now. Uh, businesses do benefit from making great connections, right? Um, how important do you think the affiliations and partnerships are for growth in the success of the business? I think in a, uh, in one way, the there are many different elements of growth. Uh, I don't really equate growth to just the marketing efforts that took take place in any organization. Uh, growth is a combination factor or, uh, of a lot of different elements within the company. Uh, and as you said, like the, uh, the partnerships uh, uh, side, in order to grow the business, it is one of the biggest things that we want to focus on in terms of, again, working with the influencers on the affiliate marketing plan. Uh, it would really work with, uh, for us if we are able to really crack that, uh, crack that uh, lever for us. I can tell you that in Pakistan, as far as I've seen, uh, the, uh, inf uh, the influencer marketing or the affiliate marketing as a, uh, as a medium to acquire a lot of users has not really worked. A lot of people have tried it, but hasn't really worked. What we are trying to do is to come up with a very strong affiliate marketing plan to be able to use an existing platform and existing user base of a particular platform or enabling working with the influencers to, to, be, to be able to target their user base to come to a platform. This is how we feel that we can actually make this a bigger part of the growth function altogether. Um, for us, growth may mean marketing, may mean product, may mean analytics, for the technology stack that we use, uh, 
uh, the, the, part, the PR element, the influencer element, the, the partnerships element, and of course there is performance marketing, your usual channels to acquire customers, and then uh, you know your offline mediums such as television and radio. Very, very, very not just limited to the amount of sales you make. Uh, unfortunately, we've come to the end of today's session, and I you know, wish you could join us for uh, another couple of sessions and some global thought spaces because I believe that there's so much that so many people can learn from you. Uh, on an ending note, I would like to ask you though, what is your take on forums such as the CX or Global Forum, and uh, what do you think is the utility of that? I think uh, uh, the C Expo Forum is, is a very good initiative in Pakistan. I think this country is in a dire need of getting the right people on the right uh, forum together to be able to explore the possible solutions to given problems. I always see uh, the entrepreneurs or technology companies as people who are actually trying to solve a problem. And the more of those kind of people coming together, putting those all those heads into one room and trying to balance off ideas and brainstorm how do you approach a possible problem to come up with a solution, I think would be the key in order for us to grow not just our own economy but also the tech landscape within Pakistan and actually compete with our neighbors like India and, and you know even in the Southeast Asia side of Indonesia and Malaysia and Philippines. Uh, this is something that would really help not just, you know, uh, uh, as I said, building that up, but also really help the young startup, uh, young startups that are coming through. Every day, almost you see somebody coming up, and the right people are starting the uh, starting their companies. And the, the the kids today are thinking about how they're going to solve the problems of tomorrow. And the guidance that would come possibly from such a forum, where you have all the industry leaders, the thought leaders, and who are able to not just influence the thought, but also the regulatory framework and a whole bunch of other stuff that would really help. And I, I commend you for starting this uh, this forum. Thank you so much, Mark, for your time. It's been uh, very, very uh, encouraging. It's been uh, very intellectually enabling for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Stay tuned for yet another episode of Rendezvous with Tanza Safi on CSO Global TV. We'll see you next time. If you want to learn more about the Mark, uh, please log on to his LinkedIn or you can visit cxoforum.global for more information about us.